Hello, today's video is designed to answer one question. What is Dehancer? To answer this question, I shot the same scene with three cameras. My mirrorless camera, the Fujifilm X-T4, a GoPro 7 Black, now a few years old, and a second-hand iPhone 7 Plus. So this is Final Cut, and now I'm loading the first clip onto the timeline below the main screen. And now from the bottom right, I'm gonna load Dehancer, drop it onto the clip. So Dehancer already adds a certain look, but it looks a little bit washed out because I need to set, first of all, what camera this footage is from, which is what you're seeing uh, right now. It's the Fujifilm, then I set X-T3 and F-Log, which is gonna fix things up. And then I turn off some of those default options that Dehancer turned on at the start. And this gets us to the basic look without any modification, which is a great place to start. As you can see, when you set a compatible camera, Dehancer is able to correct the log footage and give it a nice initial look. So this is how Final Cut has things organized. We're gonna move from left to right. So the first section over on the left is the media browser. There you can see the clips that are contained and that we're gonna use for this project. Right after the media browser, you have the waveform. It's broken up in RGB, as you can see. And the key thing is to try and stay between zero and 100. This means that the image will not clip and will ensure that it is of the best quality possible. Uh, then you have the main view, and then over on the right, you have the inspector for the clip containing all the settings for Dehancer. And you can see me adjusting things, turning things on, such as film emulation and film print, and that's changing what we see in the main view. Okay, so let's take a look at the other sections that Dehancer has. Right after the input section, we have the film section. This is where you pick the film emulation you want to use. In my case, I have Kodak Vision 3 250D. So this film emulation is based on a film stock that's actually still in production today and is available in a variety of analog film formats from 8mm all the way to 70mm. Just to give you an idea, 8mm would be for home movies back in the day. Uh, now it's mostly used by enthusiasts. And then 35mm and above, we're talking Hollywood at that point. And the price uh, goes from anywhere from $50 uh, dollars to $1,500 depending on the format that you're choosing and uh, the length of the, of, you know, of the, uh, that you're purchasing basically. So the next sections after film, so film developer, which is, I didn't expand, film compressor and expand actually. Uh, these three sections ha mainly deal with uh, the brightness of the image. So. They help me uh, brighten up the image, uh, set the shadows, set the highlights, and as I adjust them, I'm looking over to the left at the waveform to ensure that I'm not going over 100 or below zero. And then also keeping an eye on the main view to make sure that it looks good. Uh, and it's just basically adjusting and then checking those things as I adjust, uh, as I adjust the taste essentially. After the expand section, there's the print section, which I have set to Kodak 2383 print film. And then there's a few more settings that define how the film is actually then printed. Another reason why I made this video was to test Dehancer with footage from other cameras that I have. Here I'm dropping a clip from a GoPro, which shoots video footage in a different format to my Fujifilm camera. So while my Fujifilm camera shoots in that very flat, gray looking log profile, the GoPro only has a flat profile, but the GoPro collects less color information than my Fujifilm camera. So I wanted to see if Dehancer was still good for this type of footage that maybe has less color information. I wanted to see if it was still possible to get an interesting look. So I'm adjusting here the expand section. I'm trying to get uh, the brightness um, to what I like it. As you can probably see uh, from the waveform, everything kind of tends to increase or lower uh, much quicker than it did with the Fujifilm 
footage and that's because there's just less information in this video file so the changes uh, won't be able to be as extreme as they can be with the Fujifilm footage. However, I'm still pretty happy, I'm still pretty impressed with the level of editing that I can do with this footage. And you can see me here basically applying the film print again. I'm keeping the same film emulation and film print because those are the two big ingredients that will ensure that this footage matches as closely as possible the Fujifilm footage that I edited just before. It's not going to be a perfect match, but I'm trying to get a similar feel overall. And to be honest, I've been actually pretty impressed uh, with, uh, with what I can do with this footage. If uh, YouTube's compression hasn't smashed it to bits already, the one area where you will see where the GoPro footage can't go as far as the Fuji footage is actually in the sky. And that's what I'm trying to deal with now. Um, the sky kind of starts to break apart if I tweak the expand section and the, basically the exposure settings a little bit too much. That is one area where the limitation is noticeable, but overall, this is still very editable footage. The one thing that helps, I think, with the GoPro is that you can shoot in either normal mode or flat mode. So there's some um, some settings uh, called ProTune on the GoPro that allow you to limit, for example, the ISO and then also set a color profile. While it's still, you know, 8-bit color, which is more limited editing-wise, by setting the flat profile, I'm able to get, just stretch out the the flexibility of the footage just that little bit more. Just to be clear, I'm no expert at all when it comes to this, but here you can see me editing certain settings that deal with exposure and just seeing the impact that they have on the image. So to show you the effect of these next two Dehancer plugin sections, I've gone ahead and skipped forwards to the iPhone footage that I took of the same scene now here we're seeing the halation effect and I've turned on this useful mask that lets me visualize it on a black background to see what it looks like because sometimes it's hard to judge. It can be a pretty subtle effect. Halation and bloom deal with basically two characteristic behaviors of analog film when it comes to bright lights or contrasting edges. Halation is a sort of a reddish glow that can appear around bright light sources and bloom is essentially a smearing that can happen on uh, highlights of an image. Here are the results. First dehancer off, then we turn it on with just the basic Rec. 709 look. And now we have uh, the film emulation turned on with film compression and expand. We move on to adding the print settings and then the full set of settings for the final look. GoPro with nothing on, now with just the film emulation, and now it's going to be with compression, expand and print, and finally with everything turned on. Okay, and now that you know the drill, here's the iPhone results. Now this is an older iPhone, however, I'm not really pleased with the results. The image that the iPhone puts out is extremely over sharpened and it was very hard to work with. Thank you so much for watching, have a good one.